So we have the basis for our tycoon. We made buttons, we have unlockables, we have our base, we have our component system, but one thing you're, we're missing is the ability to make money. That's why in this video we'll be implementing a dropper and conveyor to at least partially solve that problem. So we're going to be making a typical Tycoon dropper that drops parts and a conveyor that moves it along. And this will all be created using the component system that we created in the second video. So stay tuned for that, like the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to my channel for more Tycoon videos, but without further ado, let's get started. So I have a dropper model in front of me, it's a very simple model, it consists of a couple of parts, and then one important thing to note is this part named Spout. It's sort of close to where I want my drops to drop from the dropper and inside of it I'm going to click the plus and create an attachment and so an attachment is basically just a point in space on your part and usually it's used for constraints and stuff but in this situation we can use it for position data so I want this attachment to be located where I want my drops to spawn so I'm going to move it down a little bit Right there is good. And I'm using attachments instead of parts just because it's a little simpler and makes my life a little bit easier. And I'm going to make sure to name this attachment spawn because we'll be using it in the code a little bit later. So that's our dropper done. And you'll notice here I have a little part. It sort of looks like copper. I'm gonna, this is going to be a copper dropper. And this is this drop that will fall from it. What I'm going to do is I already named it copper. I'm going to take it into server storage and create a new folder in server storage called drops there you go and i'm going to take my copper and drag it into the drops folder you can name it whatever you want just make sure to change the name in your code and so now we can go through the normal component creation process by dragging in our template here's our template and we can put our dropper inside of the template and then we can move the dropper to where we want it so i'm just going to move it around here somewhere maybe rotate it a little bit there we go that should be good for now while we're testing okay there's our dropper done now we can create a tag in our tag editor in the bottom right so i'm going to create a new tag called a dropper select our dropper and then add the dropper so the dropper is already added just because i use this another time and also you'll notice we have the unlockable so it has a dropper and unlockable component because droppers can be unlocked so speaking of an unlockable dropper that brings up another good point we have to make a button for our dropper so i'm going to move this button a little out of the way just so i can make a new one i'm going to use Control d to duplicate that drag it over sort of close to where the dropper is and then inside of the properties window of our button, I'm going to leave the cost to zero, change the display to copper space dropper, and then the ID, I'm just going to have copper dropper with no spaces. And then in our dropper itself, I'm going to add an attribute, and this will be the unlock ID for our unlockable. It'll be a string, and this ID will be copper dropper. So make sure the ID of our button matches the unlock ID of our dropper. So out of the box, this should function at least in a primitive way. So let's just try it out. So we're in here. We can hold E to get the copper dropper, and you can see it's in. Now it doesn't do anything because we haven't added the components to it yet for the dropper, but you can see... With no extra code, it spawns in, which is great. So now let's get scripting with our dropper. So I'm going to go into server script service, create a new component, our module script, underneath our components, and name this dropper. Make sure the name is the same as the tag name, because we use that. And we're going to go through the same deal. You guys have done this a bunch of times now, so I'm not really going to commentate. It's just a basic object-oriented class definition once again. And I'm going to follow up with my init. Dropper init. 
And then up here, I'm going to finish the dropper new by saying equals self equals set meta table, blank table in the dropper, and then return self. And then we are going to need both the tycoon and the instance. So I'm going to say self.tycoon equals tycoon and self.instance equals instance. There we go. And we are going to need a few other values from our dropper, but I'm not going to hard code them in this. I'm going to go to server storage, go to my template, and go to my dropper and add some attributes. So droppers, they vary in a couple ways. The first way is going to be the drop template. So I'm going to make a new attribute named drop, which is going to be a string. And this string of our drop is going to correspond to our copper underneath the drops folder. So I'm just going to say copper. And then in below that, we're also going to put a new number value, which will be the rate. So the rate will be in how many times a second something is dropped. So I'm just going to do one drop per one second. So a rate of one. And we can leave the unlock ID down there. So we have drop, which will be copper, and the rate, which will be one. And we can get those values here. So underneath the self.instance, we can say self.rate equals instance get attribute rate. And then for the drop template, we first need to get the drops folder in server storage by going to the top and saying local drops equals or drops folder equals game get service server storage dot drops. There we go. And then for our drop template, we can just say self dot drop template equals. I'm going to do drop folder. And instead of doing find first child or wait for child, I'm just going to use brackets. And this these brackets assume that the drop exists which it should so if you get any weird errors make sure that your drop is underneath the drops folder in server storage because you want to figure this out before the game starts you don't want to get a nil error like in the middle of nowhere so that's why we're doing this so inside of these brackets i'm going to say instance get attribute drop so the drop is copper it'll look in our drop folder or drops folder i should say and it will see if the drop exists, and if it doesn't exist, it'll probably error. Just to make, like, let you know that you need to fix it. And then for convenience, I'm also going to define the drop spawn, which is that attachment that we talked about earlier. So the self.drop spawn will be equal to instance dot spout, or whatever you named it, dot spawn, or whatever you named it. And that is our new function done. So now we can move on to our init function that I put down here. And so this is going to be a very simple init statement. All we have to do is run a function every so often that will drop a part. So I'm going to use a coroutine for this. And the reason I'm using a coroutine just so we don't have our components yielding anything. And if you don't know about coroutines or spawns or whatever or multi-threading in Lua, I have a view on that. I'll link it right now. So I'm going to say coroutine.wrap. And then inside of this, I'm going to define a new function. And all we want to do here is say while true do. And then we want to wait self.rate. And then below that, below our init, we're going to say function dropper drop. And then we'll... And after we define a function, we can go back up to the while true, and then below, before the wait, we can say self drop. So what's happening is we're creating a coroutine that will loop every so often and drop the part. Now, realistically, if you want to be ultra safe and ultra secure, you wouldn't use while true. You'd use while a boolean or something, and or maybe use like run service or something, but this while true is just very simple and very sweet and it's easy. And make sure, this is very important, that you put a set of parentheses at the end of your coroutine.wrap. Because this coroutine.wrap just creates a coroutine, it doesn't actually call it. 
So by putting these parentheses, it will call the function that it creates in here. And I decided to keep this function in line and not like make it separate down here just because it's short and doesn't really do that much. And now we can go to our drop or drop function. Now this will be pretty simple. All we got to do is clone our drop template. So I'll say local drop equals self dot drop template clone. There we go. And then we'll say drop dot position equals self dot drop spawn dot world position. You can use C frames if you want. I don't think it's necessary in my situation, so I'm not. And then below that, we're just going to say drop dot parent equals self dot instance. So the drop will be, oh, I spelled parent wrong. Whoops, there we go. So dr the drop will be positioned at our spawn, and then we will parent it to the workspace indirectly via the parent of our dropper, just so it's nice and contained and we don't clutter our workspace with, with a bunch of random crap. And then you we're not done yet, because one thing that I've noticed, I've made a Tycoon game before, is that you always want a fail save for your drops, because if they don't hit the collector at the end of the conveyor, and they just sit there, they'll never despawn on their own. So that's why we're going to employ a very useful service that Roblox has called the debris service. So I'm going to go to the very top of the script and say local debris equals game get service debris. And then below our parentage, we can say debris add item drop. And then the next argument is the amount of seconds you want your item to stay in the workspace before it gets destroyed. So I'm just going to do 10 seconds. See, that's a good value for my situation and the conveyors I'll be making. Change this value to whatever you want. Don't make it too short or the drops will get destroyed before they get collected and you won't get any money. But this is just for overflow if the player interacts with it or if your game bugs or something. You don't want to spawn hundreds and hundreds of parts that just won't get destroyed. So we should be ready to go to test this. So I'm going to hit play. And create my copper dropper. And you can see the drops do indeed spawn in. And let's just wait a little bit and see if our little debris statement is working. Wait a couple of seconds and these should start disappearing. You can see they're all going away. And that's great. Now obviously... This is kind of useless without a conveyor. So let's get that implemented. So I have a very simple conveyor set up in front of me. It consists of three parts. And make sure the middle part of your conveyor, the part where the parts will actually like travel across, is named belt. Because we will use that in our code. Now, most of the time in Roblox, creating a conveyor is as easy as going into the properties and setting the velocity. In our case, it's assembly linear velocity. But one thing with tycoons is the fact that your tycoons may not be oriented in the same direction every time. So this assembly linear velocity will not apply in different orientations. So you're going to have to manually script that in. And one thing you want to note when creating your belt is that the front face is pointing in the right direction, the direction you want it to go. So if you want to see that, go to belt, go to your belt, and then right click and then show orientation indicator. This front little icon should be facing where you want your parts to go. So front's facing to the right, so the parts will go from left to right. Now that we have that all out of the way, let's drag our template from server storage into the workspace, and we can take our conveyor and move it to the proper location. So I'm going to drag it over here and then rotate it. Just around. Oh, whoops. I'm just going to use Control r to rotate it. There you go. That's a little easier. And then our front is facing away from the dropper because we want the parts to go f away from the dropper. That's great. So I'm not going to give this an unlockable because in most tycoons, I'm pretty sure the conveyor is spawned in off the bat when you own the tycoon. You can give it unlockable if you want, but I don't really care. So I'm going to take my conveyor and drag it into the template model, just so it's part of our tycoon. And I'm going to add a conveyor component. And I'm going to make sure my conveyor is highlighted, and then click the conveyor tag. So now it's tagged 
we can take the template, drop it back into server storage, and get scripting. So, you know the drill, new component, module script, rename it to component, or conveyor, I should say. And then we write it all. Okay, so we will need to get the Tycoon and the Instance for our conveyor. We don't really need the Tycoon, but we do need the Instance. So I'm going to do self.instance equals Instance. And then one thing we want for our conveyor is to be able to configure the speed. So I'm going to go back to our template, go to our conveyor, hover over the model, and add a new attribute. And I'm going to make a new number attribute and call this speed. And for right now, I'll just say it, set it to 5 studs per second. There we go. So that's the speed of how fast our conveyor is going. And then we can get that value by saying self.speed equals instance get attribute speed. There we go. So that's really all we need in our new. And then in our init. We just need to get our belt by saying local belt equals self dot instance dot belt. And then we'll say belt dot assembly linear velocity equals belt dot C frame dot look vector times self dot speed. So what this will do is it'll set the velocity. And if you guys didn't know, a part that is anchored with their their velocity set basically turns into a conveyor belt. I, I assume that was common knowledge. Sorry for that. But make sure your belt is anchored. And if it is, and if it has any assembly li any linear velocity, it will exert that force to any parts that are touching it. So in this case, setting our assembly linear velocity to the look factor times self.speed will point it to wherever that low forward indi indicator I showed you earlier was going. And we're multiplying it by self.speed to configure it since the look vector is a unit vector and therefore doesn't really have any magnitude. And that should work straight out of the box. So let's test it out. So let's just try standing on it. You can see when we stand on the conveyor, it moves us. And then we can get our copper dropper and it drops parts towards the end of the conveyor. And that is absolutely wonderful. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed getting the basic framework done for our dropper and our conveyor. In the next video, we will be making the collector for our parts and also the little kiosk bank thing to turn your collected drops into money. So stay tuned for that. Make sure to subscribe to my channel to stay up to date with the Dacoon series. Comment any questions or suggestions down below. Make sure to like the video. And also, you can join my Discord server. The link will be in the description. And also in the description, you'll find the code for this video. So, other than that, I hope you guys have a nice day. And goodbye.